Welcome to this session of the Education and Training Month organized by the Global Alliance to provide all professionals uh, access to free uh, sessions or master classes if you want. In my case, today I'm going to talk about something which I think is uh, relevant to all professionals because uh, I will be talking about how we can define the future of our profession. It means that uh, we are, together with uh, the Global Alliance, we are working on building a new uh, PR and communication model. And the reason why we are working on, on this is because uh, we can say that we are immersed in a new economic and social cycle, which might be called the uh, reputation and intangibles economy. It is a new context, uh, which is uh, basically driven by the uh, increase of the value of intangibles, the total value of uh, the companies, which means that uh, the way organizations are creating value is based on the ability to achieve lasting differentiation over time and the ability to build a, a rational and emotional bond with uh, all their stakeholders. And the reason why the intangibles are, have risen in value is because the drivers to achieve that uh, long-standing differentiation and the social legitimacy have uh, changed dramatic, dramatically in the last 30 years. In the past, the drivers to get differentiation and legitimacy were tangible. They were based on the ability to produce new products and services, which in our were not easy to copy and was a guarantee to get uh, this differentiation over time and allowed us in the past to create value because of this uh, differentiation which explained the price customers were willing to pay for our products and services. On the other hand, Legitimacy was based also in a very tangible platform, which is uh, basically the compliance, compliance of the laws. That compliance was a guarantee to get and preserve your license to operate. But since the end of the 80s, these uh, rules have completely changed with the the lack of ability to get differentiation through, through products and services and the need to obtain that lasting differentiation, we found that uh, it is in the intangible side where we can guarantee that we get that differentiation based on basically the purpose, the values and the brand, which is the tool nowadays to build long lasting differentiation and on the other hand when we talk about the license to operate and after all the crisis that we have been suffering and uh, we continue to suffer basically the legitimacy is uh, nowadays social it is not enough to uh, get all the compliance right, it is not enough to fulfill the, uh, the laws and the requirements done by regulators all over the world. We need something else which is much more important and more difficult to get, which is uh, social legitimacy. If we don't get that uh, legitimacy from uh, our stakeholders, we are not going to be able to maintain our license to operate. And uh, again, the management tools to build that social legitimacy are corporate reputation and sustainability. In this context, we see a huge opportunity for professionals of PR and communications. 
we think they are the, the best positioned uh, in this uh, role of uh, managing in an integrated way both uh, the purpose, the brand, reputation, sustainability, and obviously communications. And uh, this huge opportunity is what is going to define the future of our profession. And that is the reason why we started last year with a, a project, a research project, which is going to uh, hopefully deliver a new model of PR and communications uh, by the end of uh, this year, during the, the annual conference in Auckland. When organizing this session about the Global Alliance PR and communication model, I have uh, set up four different blocks. The first one is uh, the reason why a new roadmap is needed. The second one is uh, how we are defining, in terms of methodology, the communication model. The third block is about, in the last months, what we have learned till now. And the last block is the next steps, where you have an, a very important role. I mean, you have a role. What should you do right now? And it's a call to action. The starting point was the Melbourne mandate. It was presented in 2012, so it was eight years ago. And as you can imagine, during his uh, last eight years, the context has completely changed. We live uh, in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous context which has uh, made uh, or had provoked a change in the way uh, we create value and we protect our risks. And uh, we call that, as I said before, the reputation and intangibles economy. And we see this as uh, an, e an extraordinary opportunity to redefine the future of our profession. It is a huge opportunity for all professionals around the world who are dealing with uh, communications and, and PR. And uh, while the Melbourne mandate remains, remains relevant and aspirational, we think that we need a new model to help this redefinition of uh, our profession and our role within the uh, organizations. And uh, to summarize uh, the context, I think uh, this uh, slide is uh, dramatic in terms of uh, the opportunities that offers to the ones who are able to manage in an integrated way the intangible side of companies. Because if you see back in the 80s, the intangibles, represented about 20% of the value and the risk of companies. At that time, basically we were able to build value by launching new products and services, difficult to copy. So the idea was to make them available as soon as possible to the largest proportion of population and at the lower cost. So we started the with success, the uh, era of uh, marketing and uh, uh, massive advertising, which were king until the 90s. Because what has happened then is that our ability or capability to design, innovate in new products and services difficult to copy we really lost that ability. And uh, nowadays, everything is uh, copied. So we still need a long-lasting differentiation. 
And the, the reason why intangibles are now representing more than 80% of the value taking the standard Poor's uh, 500 uh, market value is because differentiation is coming not from products and services, but from the way we manage our purpose, our brand, and the values and culture of our organizations. And if we take uh, the rest of the companies, not only the, uh, the Standard & Poor, we have an average value of 50%. 50% is tangible, the other 50% is intangible. And no one is uh, taking the uh, role of being the uh, official chief intangible manager in the company to deal with this 50 or 80% of the value and risk. And we think that uh, corporate communication directors are the ones who can take this, this role. The ones who have realized immediately this change in context are investors. And according to the Integrated Reporting Initiative, the investors are describing this uh, intangible in a very easy way to understand. What they say basically is that uh, any company is uh, managing six different capitals. Two of them are tangible, the financial capital and the industrial capital. Those two capitals explained in the past more, in the past more than 80% of the value. And that was the reason why investors were satisfied with the way we, uh, uh, we accounted by communicating basically the way we were managing financial and industrial capital. They were looking exclusively at financial figures and they were right because you were able as an investor to differentiate between companies just looking at the, the financial report. But what has happened in the last few years is that uh, there are other four capitals who are intangible and who have been growing and rocketing. Those four capitals in the language of investors are people capital, how you deal with your staff. The second one is social and relationship capital. As, and here what we have is anything related with uh, creating capital value with uh, our stakeholders. So it goes back to reputation management, to sustainability management, to the brand and the corporate brand management. Then we have innovation capital, so this ability to, to provide solutions and services to society, and the environmental capital, the, the way we deal with uh, the environment. So those four capitals have been growing in the last years, and they represent, as I said before, 50, from 50 to 80% of the total value of companies. So what investors are telling us very clearly is that they need to know how we are managing this in an integrated way, the six capitals, both the intangibles and the intangible ones, to provide our uh, value propositions to our stakeholders. You see how companies are integrating the six capitals into what we have in the middle of this slide, which is uh, the business model. And you see that the business model at the top, we have the mission and vision, what we call today the, the purpose. And the way we manage opportunities and risk based on that purpose and the way we allocate the strategy and the resources. And our value propositions is uh, basically the outcomes of this business model, which is a business model 
that we can call a purpose-driven business model, which means that uh, the outcomes and our value proposition is going to integrate both the tangible and the intangibles capital, ensuring both a sustainable differentiation and our license to operate. That is the narrative that investors are expecting from us. And again, it is a corporate communication a PR function can take this opportunity of creating a high level corporate narrative which starts with the purpose of the company closely related to the strategy and allocation of resources. And that's probably the reason why when we ask the CEOs around the world about which are the 10 top risks they can, uh, they can see for the future, it is no surprise that we see at the top of those risks the damage to reputation on the corporate brand. And you see it is in the first position, even if we think about the other nine risks which are so important, like the economic slowdown, the regulatory risks, increasing competition, those results are back in uh, 2016. Last year, and uh, taking the reference of the same, uh, uh, the same source, what we have seen is that uh, nowadays the uh, the first risk, is, the first risk, is the economic slowdown and the slow recovery. No surprise. But guess where damaged reputation and brand is uh, located now? It is not in the bottom. It is in the second place. It is still in the second place. So investors and CEOs are fully aware of the importance of uh, managing in an excellent way those intangibles. So we can say that purpose-driven organizations and uh, the ones who manage in an excellent way their corporate brands are outperforming their peers. And we can see this both in the left-hand side, where we compare the uh, companies who are best in class in managing uh, their uh, intangible capitals, especially the social capital and the uh, environmental capital compared to, to the rest of the portfolio. And in the right hand side, we see the uh, comparison of companies who are managing in an excellent way their, their brands with the rest of, uh, of the companies. You see, there is a huge difference in the uh, potential creation of value based on the intangible capitals and the excellent uh, management of the uh, corporate brand. And in, uh, Regarding the expectations of the, the population, the citizens all over the world, in this research, which is based in 25 countries, where we uh, compare the importance of different issues and the performance perceived by uh, those citizens, we see that uh, in the first place, we have uh, this idea of being open, transparency, and honest, being environmentally friendly, no surprise, and the performance is very low. The reality uh, perceived by citizens regarding how companies are dealing with this idea of integrity and uh, leading with the uh, environmental capital is, uh, is quite bad. <laughs> but look at the right-hand side. Citizens all over the world are expecting companies to have a corporate purpose and here, the situation is not so negative. It is important for them, and they are getting the perception that companies are advancing in this idea of building a purpose-driven strategy. And that's probably the reason why 
And again, coming back to the investors, the uh, president of BlackRock in, the, in his annual letter last year, Larry Fink, uh, made a, a very clear statement linking purpose and profit. And what he said is basically that the BlackRock is not going to invest in companies who have not defined and activate their purpose because they see a, di a direct correlation between those companies and the generation of uh, profits in a sustainable way. Let me tell you now how we are defining the uh, new communication model. When I say we, I mean uh, Corporate Excellence Center for Reputation Leadership because we are the ones who are undertaking this research as well as assuming all the associated costs of this uh, project as a contribution to the Global Alliance. And I have to tell you in a few words who we are. We are, and uh, I can say, a think tank of uh, innovation, research, knowledge, and training activities specialized in intangible assets and resources. We created this organization, which is a nonprofit one, uh, eight, nine years ago. It is financed by the largest or some of the largest companies in Spain and Latin America, 23 companies belonging to 10 different sectors. Uh, amongst those companies, we have uh, about 350 directors who are in charge of communications, brand, reputation, sustainability, business intelligence, and even if uh, they are direct competitors, we work together. It is a way of helping each other in uh, this idea of managing in an excellent way the intangible side of our companies as well as sharing this knowledge with the rest of the world. In order to do this, what we have done is uh, creating a, a knowledge platform based on alliances with uh, universities, universities and, uh, and consultancy firms. More than 25 universities and business schools and 30 consultancy firms around the world who are helping us in developing innovation in uh, measurement tools, in management tools, as well as in uh, launching new models of uh, approaching the best way we can manage the corporate brand, sustainability, reputation, communications. Those alliances allowed us to create a knowledge center, which is a free access for anybody who's interested in, uh, in those topics. The way we think we can uh, help professionals, we can help you, is by, again, creating strong alliances with all the corporate bodies and the associations all around the world, starting with the Global Alliance, and that is the reason why our work is done for you, for the Global Alliance, which means that we are trying to help more than 250,000 professionals around the world. The steering committee of this project is led by three members of the uh, board of directors of the Global Alliance. Jose Manuel Velasco as the past president, Dr. Amibel Sanchez from the University San Martin de Porres in Peru, and uh, myself and my team, my excellent team in Corporate Excellence Center for Reputation Leadership. And as, as I said, we are the knowledge partner for this project. What we have done till now in this project is uh, we have reviewed all the existing literature all the past uh, research which were relevant, all the studies about the future of communication, a future of our profession, including uh, obviously the Global Capabilities Project undertaking 
for the Global Alliance by uh, Professor Anne Gregory and uh, her team. The excellent papers and, uh, and content production done by uh, the European Communication Monitor, the Page Society, the Canadian, Canadian Public Relations Society. Again, we have revised more than 100 papers and previous research as uh, the methodological starting point for our project. The second step is uh, basically a top level consultation phase, which has been also carried out because it meant engaging the Global Alliance Board, the chairs of regional councils and uh, the Global Alliance members at large, as well as uh, our own members at Corporate Excellence and in the rest of the organizations to be sure that uh, we were designing a research which is going to be relevant, useful to define the future of our profession. And we are also uh, uh, counting with the academic support of the chair of metrics on, and management of intangibles in the University of Malaga here in Spain. It is a chair financed by corporate excellence. And now we are in the third step. We are building the, the new global PR and communication model, which means that uh, this third step is based on a survey, which is now open for completion of an online questionnaire addressed to all Global Alliance members. I'm going to come back to this point, which is the, uh, the most important one, because uh, we would like to gather all the uh, uh, insights from different continents, different cultures, to be able to make a very inclusive and uh, consensus-based uh, new model to help us in defining our, the future of our profession. I will come back to that because uh, we need your help. Let me now summarize what we have learned till now. We have been revising, as I told you before, the academic and professional uh, production, papers and research. Here I have a, a very, uh, five different models, the building belief models uh, produced by uh, the Page Society. Obviously the golden circle theory of Simon Sinek, the yin yang model by Colin and for us, the seventh framework in search of excellence of Peters and Waterman, and the uh, Medinge brand think uh, tank called the brand with a conscience. So bearing in mind those five models, I will uh, summarize now a roadmap defined for the integrated management of uh, the intangibles at uh, corporate excellence. In this uh, roadmap, we can see that uh, the first and initial stage requires the definition and activation of a purpose for a company, but not defining that purpose for the stakeholders, but defining the uh, purpose with them, with a direct and continuous consultation with your stakeholders in order to be sure that uh, when communicated the purpose, there will be activation, there will be supporting behavior from all your stakeholders. The second step is measurement. In the intangible economy, we need to be sure that we are using sophisticated ways of measuring the outcomes that we are getting from our activity to demonstrate to the rest of the C-suite that uh, advancing in intangibles means direct business for the organization. The third step is basically changing the way we organized our companies basically in silos with uh, vertical objectives. And this is basically a huge barrier if we want to manage the brand, uh, the reputation, communication, and sustainability in an integrated way, which requires a much more transversal and horizontal organization. Step four is key because step four means that uh, we are going to change the way we uh, uh, provide bonuses and compensations to the staff and the directors. Up until now, until the 90s, basically, uh, 
compensation is based on uh, financial KPIs. And that's basically the reason why we ended up with uh, such amount of prices around the world. So we need to add to these uh, financial indicators some non-financial indicators. And no surprise, the most important ones who should be in the balance scorecard of the company and closely related to compensation policies are basically reputation, employee commitment, customer satisfaction, and uh, the uh, net promoter score, the willingness of uh, our employees and clients to advocate our products and services. And uh, I would add also another key indicator uh, regarding the health of our corporate brand. The next step is basically what we get from this roadmap and you get a sustainable differentiation on one side and your license to operate. This is basically the roadmap that any company should follow in a, in a world where we have to navigate in the intangible economy. And uh, defining the future of profession means taking it into account which are the main functions a chief communication officer should be in charge to be able to fulfill the expectations that the CEO is having directly from him. Let me summarize this uh, by the starting point. Corporate communication directors should be able to define and activate the corporate purpose of uh, the company. They should also be leading the corporate brand management, which means activating that purpose in each one of the touch points of our brand providing reputation intelligence and guidelines for promoting values and a strong corporate culture and providing this uh, intelligence to decision-making processes in the C-suite. Designing digital platforms to build on the, the social and relationship capital with uh, or our stakeholders. Developing and publishing relevant content for stakeholders, which is going to be basically communicated by our employees and our current clients. That's probably one of the key issues regarding the uh, future model of communication. It is about other people talking about us and not us talking about ourselves. The ones who have the credibility and uh, the trust are basically our employees and our current clients. Uh, being the professional who connects the company with uh, those expectations and perceptions from uh, all our stakeholders. And this links directly to the work done by Professor Anne Gregory for the Global Alliance, the Global Capability Framework, because uh, we are defining in our project a model for the future of our profession, which is closely linked to the capabilities uh, identified in the work of the global capability framework. Those capabilities are key to be able to uh, implement the new model that we will be presenting in October. So there is a, a closed integration between the work done in the global capabilities framework and the new communication model that we are nowadays uh, defining. And coming back to this idea of uh, what would be the uh, ideal organization of a corporate communication um, department at the top? You have here the chief communication uh, officer close to him and directly reporting to him the strategy, intelligence, and planning function. This idea of getting and measuring the expectations of our key stakeholders as well as demonstrating the outcomes of uh, our work directly or closely related to the business and value creation. And the key functions that uh, this chief communication officer should lead, starting by communications in the center, communications with all stakeholders, all channels, corporate reputation, sustainability, corporate brand and culture, definition of the purpose and uh, activation through the corporate brand in all the touch points, corporate affairs and institutional relations to be able to build a social and relationship capital, as well as uh, corporate marketing and advertising 
and also communications with uh, our investors. And basically, this is the, uh, the organization chart that we are uh, currently training in uh, one of our uh, uh, professional uh, programs that we uh, have been uh, rolling in the last eight years with uh, a business school in Spain called ESADE. Now we are in the final block of my session. It is the most important one because it's not about me. It is not about corporate excellence. It is about you. What should you do right now if we want to achieve the goal of uh, having a new PR and communication model with uh, all the insights coming from uh, all the world and all the key professionals connected and belonging to the Global Alliance, it is your turn. Because what we need from you is basically join the survey. We have an online questionnaire, which is uh, about uh, 25 minutes to fulfill. And it is an incredible and powerful tool. And we ask to do this effort. Please fulfill the questionnaire, join the survey, in order to make sure that all views, all cultural differences are included in uh, the new PR and communication model, which is going to be presented in New Zealand, 12, 15 October, in the World PR Forum this year. Thank you very much indeed for attending this session. I hope it has been uh, useful for you. And uh, sorry to insist, <laughs> please fulfill the questionnaire. Thank you.